Hello everybody, uh, this is a tutorial about Godot and how to port uh, a Seder from Seder toy to Godot. So, for, you, for those of you who don't really know, Seder toy is a website that has a lot of different kinds of Seders. Uh, the site actually focuses a lot on what is called uh, Science Dinsan Fields, which is basically a rendering method that instead of using ray tracing, it uses a process that it actually um, takes mathematical uh, instruct uh, mathematical uh, functions uh, and uh, for shapes, and then it creates a, a method that actually traces rays, like you do with ray tracing. But the difference also that those tra those uh, races are basically traced step by step, and uh, they are traced by diameter of a cycle. So they actually the ray knows the distance from different objects and that's why we call them distance fields and uh, this method is actually pretty cool because it gives us uh, a lot of detail almost infinite detail and gives us also some free stuff like uh, anti-aliasing and soft shadows and other stuff so shader has a lot of those kind of things but also it has other stuff like simple vertex shaders uh, which are not necessarily using something like science distance fields uh, that can be easily be used uh, inside uh, your Godot game and do some really interesting effects. One shader I found that I really wanted to port it in Godot and see myself, because I am also a noob, I haven't really used shaders before in Godot, uh, so I wanted to see how difficult it is to port it, uh, is this uh, shader. Now, for those who don't really know what a shader really is, a shader basically is uh, uh, your graphic art, uh, when it renders uh, in, uh, in 3D and 2D, um, it, it does a process is called rasterization, which usually takes the information of vertex, it takes the information of edge, of a, tri a triangle, and tries to project it on a plane. And of course, that plane represents uh, your screen, essentially. So a shader basically can take this information uh, and basically create graphics like the ones we see uh, by manipulating every pixel or manipulating the information that leads to the projection to the screen to become a pixel. So you can actually manipulate things like vertexes, you can manipulate things like edges, uh, and in more uh, recent OpenGL implementations, which Godot doesn't really support, uh, you can also do things like tessellations, so you can divide your geometry and do level of detail and this kind of stuff. And more recently, you have uh, compute shaders, which basically they do or general computation, because graphics in the end of the day it's basically linear algebra, and you can use linear algebra for a lot of different things, including artificial intelligence, in, and this is one of the reasons why uh, GPUs are very popular also with AI. So, right now, the support of Godot is only for um, uh, vertex shaders and... Uh, what else? And, of course, fragment shaders, which fragment shaders basically uh, uh, work only for pixel, they work per pixel, so it means that it runs this kind of uh, program, every pixel it renders. So every pixel renders, it's take it as an input and uses this input to generate and do all this kind of, you know, uh, complicated math to really come up with these two different shapes. Another variable it takes also is time, which is the time of animation. So when the time proceeds frame by frame, it uses this variable, uh, which is a number, uh, to really create the effect of the animation here. And we have basically here uh, a, a typical fragment shader. Now, how we can import this in Godot is a very good, uh, you know, it's a very good question here. Well, one way to do that, and the way that I did that, um, uh, I did it like this. So, as you can see here, I have created a very uh, uh, simple scene, which basically I will also share. Uh, let me go back. I will actually provide a link to a repository I've made. Let me go back. Uh, this is the repository I've made where you actually can download my code and study it yourself. Uh, includes, includes, of course, the shader itself and the scene that you have created, very simple scene that I created here. So let's go back to Godot. And I have created a very simple setup. I created, uh, I started with a 3D scene. I added a mesh instance, which is a simple plane. Uh, there's nothing really special about it. Uh, I added a camera and uh, look at, you know, look at the camera and added also a simple omni light uh, with uh, one energy. Um, the only special thing is that here in uh, in material, I created this shader. So I click here, I created a new shader material, and then here I selected a uh, new shader. And when you do that, it opens this window where you actually can write your shader. 
So if we maximize here, we're going to see that uh, the first thing I added here was uh, the link where the shader can be found the original shader. So I can create it the original, you know, I'm, I'm not actually the author of the shader. Um, so uh, I wanted to credit uh, the person that actually created the shader. And then I basically copy paste everything. Now, the problem, however, with porting from shader toy is that not everything works exactly the same um, uh, from shader toy. And the reason why we find that because shader toy uses WebGL, which is uh, OpenGL for the web. So there is some differences there because obviously, as you know, browsers have their own limitations. They cannot really do everything that a desktop application can do in order to be able to run mobile phones, smart devices, and you know, um, tablets, etc. And also because Godot has a, this kind of peculiarity, which has its own kind of shading language. It still is, looks very similar. Fortunately, I didn't have to change much, but I will actually show you now what exactly I have to change to make this work. Now, the first thing I have to do as you can hear, so let me first of all see if I can create the resolution. All right, nice. Let me, let me zoom up and let me also uh, maximize the area so we can see here more easily what I have done. Okay. So as you can see here, I created uh, the first thing uh, Godot requires that wasn't required by a shader toy was uh, the creation of a variable uh, that uh, a definition, actually, more uh, precisely, that defines the shader tab. So what kind of shader are you actually using? And we say that we define here a special shader. Now, as far as I know, there's also uh, uh, one special shader for 2D graphics. Uh, and what else there is? I think there is also another kind of shader. I don't, don't remember it. But in this example, we're going to use just spatial shader. So we're going to focus on that. So. Um, from what I changed from there on is that I found that in the original shader, uh, in the original shader, let me go back to let me go back to this one. In the original shader, as you can see here, you have the simple definition of functions, uh, and the problem I had was let me see where I found. I have the problem here. So as you can see here, there is a variable it's called i time. Now that uh, variable is not exactly the same name in uh, the Godot shader language. It's actually named time with capital letters. However, the problem, however, is that even though in this shader you can access the variable from anywhere, in the, in the way, because the way that uh, Godot shader really works, you can access all of this variable only from inside the fragment function. Uh, and the reason behind that is because uh, Godot, uh, in the Godot shader language, uh, uh, even though in the OpenGL traditionally you separate the vertex shader from uh, the fragment shader in the coding when you create a shader you can actually unite the two and the only way to differentiate between the two is creating a different function for the vertex shader and a different function for uh, the vertex shader now the vertex as we said is all about displacing and manipulating vertices which of course we don't really need here because we just need to work only with the pixels uh, with the pixel information um, so because this variable is only accessible in the main function of the vertex shader, of the fragment shader, cannot be used the way the same definition we have here. So I change that by passing to every function that I have access to uh, i time, which in uh, Godot is actually a couple of time. I pass an added and secondary parameter, which is uh, the the time variable. Now the time variable is the one that is responsible for doing this animation. It's the one that actually tracks the passage of time and uses the passage of time. We can animate the pixels and we can create the effect of animation. So it's very well, but it's very important to have this variable. We cannot really just remove it. <coughs> Excuse me. So. Because this is uh, only accessible from the fragment function, I actually had it be passed by uh, in every function that actually uses it. So the code here, uh, let me go back to my code, is as I said here, I define and I, I put an additional i time float, which is uh, uh, the uh, the type of variable for time. So if we go down here, we're gonna see. Let's see where i, I time has been used. Uh, see, I've used it somewhere here. Um, it was here that was used. No, what was used? Nothing. I posted around to, f to call the other function. So here, as we can go and see, uh, I pass the time function to hmap, which also uses this as a variable. So this is actually the conversion here. 
of uh, the, the time function um, to, to actually the animation. And that, function, that variable is used, let me see, where was it? I think it uses it here somewhere. Let me one second to find it. It has been used for animating where? Um, where was it? Let's see, here. It was used in line 38. So actually, this should be the same lines. So where is 38? Yeah, here it is. So as you can see, I use the A time here that I pass from the fragment set. So the, basically, the fragment set is here, which is the equivalent of this function. So basically, I took this function. Sorry, let me use it here because you don't see it. I took this function, which is called main image, which is traditional, the, uh, the, uh, one of the functions you can use. Uh, which basically, this is the main function. It's the first function that's called for the fragment set. It's the first thing that is get past the coordinates of the pixel. And it can do the anime, it can do the manipulation. It's past the coordinates of the pixel, and of course, past the color of the pixel as well. So I removed all these parameters here, which is the out variable and the in variable. And instead, I use this definition here, which is fragment uh, and with, without any uh, variables inside. And I also made the change here, which is the frag chord, because we'll go back. Uh, we have here the frag chord, which is converted to this variable, frag chord xy. And uh, then it has the i resolution x, which is basically the y axis of the resolution of the image. Because I know that my window is two, uh, 290, uh, right? Yeah, 2090 by 1080, which is the 1080 resolution that typically is used for all videos. Uh, I knew that it was 1080, so I actually took the variable directly. Uh, there are also a, an equivalent resolution variable here that Godot is using, but I decided to go uh, with uh, just the uh, Y resolution for simplicity. And then, of course, I continue the code as it was, and then I passed the time uh, the i time, which converted to capital time here, because that's uh, the variable it uses uh, in the Goto shader language, uh, instead of using the i time, which is what uh, shader toy is using. Uh, the same, the difference here is also that I pass time as a, 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 an argument to the hmap functions, uh, which is not something that shader do it, but I do it because, as I said, the time constant cannot be accessed outside the fragment function. Uh, which is not the case with the item variable that Sederto is doing, which can be accessed from outside the, the, the main fragment function. And uh, yeah, and the other thing that changes is also the output, because of course you have to uh, tell to the Seder that, uh, okay, I took now the information, now let me give you back what color it's going to use per pixel. And instead of using color, and actually I keep this as a comment here, so you have an idea what the original uh, code really says, this is the original code from Shader Toy. I change color, and because color is a constant, it cannot be used and cannot be written, uh, unlike color uh, which can be written in the, uh, in the Shader Toy. It's actually frag color, which is a different uh, name of the variable, but it's the same thing. It's basically the output pixel. It's converted to albedo, and it's passed because it's a different also type of constant. It's not a vec4, which takes four parameters. It's a vec3 that takes three parameters. I reject the last. Uh, argument because of course it's uh, it's one argument less and I keep the rest of the code as it is. So that's about it. Um, and I don't know if somewhere else the time is really used, which is you know basically the same effect. I think the time is used somewhere else as well. Yeah, it's used here, uh, and I think it was used somewhere else as well, and used here, as you can see. So, as you can see, the, uh, it's, it's, it's passed as an argument here. So, by doing this, we have this shader. So, we have actually done very little things. We renamed the main function. We removed the, uh, the arguments to the function because the fragment function in, uh, in the world doesn't take any arguments. We changed the output variable from color, we changed it to frag color to change it to albedo. And we passed the time as a, as a function argument to the relevant functions that have access to it because it cannot be, ac it cannot be ac uh, accessed uh, 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 outside the fragment function. Now, one of this about access, maybe there's a better way of doing this. So again, I'm a beginner here. I'm not really 100% uh, 
certain that maybe I'm doing something wrong. But uh, for me, it works well, and I don't think it's anything wrong with it. Uh, and as you can see, it works very well. So let me mix maximize here the window. And as you can see, it creates this beautiful, uh, let me see if I see it myself as well, a beautiful animation. And uh, wait, 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 where is it? Go to that. Yeah. Okay, now I see it myself. So it creates this beautiful, nice animation. I hope it looks smoothly as it looks to me. Uh, it seems to me that it doesn't have any problem displaying. Um, I probably will play around with the original colors a bit because I've seen in the original, uh, as you can see, it's a bit more uh, saturated. Uh, so I don't really know why there is a difference, a bit of saturation here. Probably there's something different in your variables that I've missed. Uh, but other than that, actually works very well. So this is one very simple way to do it, even though the shader is actually pretty large, not very big, but it's pretty large. It didn't really require a lot of changes, and I was able to use it very easily. It took me a bit of time to figure things out, but other than that, it was pretty cool. Now, about those conversions, there is actually link documentation, which I will link. Uh, you can find information here. Uh, I found information, I think, was migrating. So you can see here it has... Uh, in the Godot documentation, one uh, lengthy description which says migrating to Godot shading language. Uh, and you can use that to you know, find inf information yourself. And if you go down here, it has, it, it generally speaks for a lot of different things that are a bit different. Uh, but the, the conversion actually I found is actually this box here, which says variables. So as you can see, there's a frag color which says supposed to close to color. In reality, I chose it to albedo because color is actually, as we say, is a constant, cannot be changed. And then we have frog code, which is frog code uh, XY, which also changes. I resolution, which I end up not using, as you remember, I said that I used 1080 uh, directly as a number, uh, but you can actually use screen pixel size. Uh, remember, this is a vector three. Uh, I'm not sure why it's a vector three. Screen resolution, pixel size. I'm not sure what the third argument is, but it should be X, Y, and something else here. Then we have the i time variable, which we did the extra work, which, as we say, converts to time. And then, of course, there are other, uh, you know, the other variables here that they, you know, you can be provided as uniforms, which basically are variables that you can pass from GDScript or C sharp to your shader itself. So basically, uniform is a way to interface the shader with the main application, which I'm probably going to show I mean, later on. Texture is also a very useful one when you do a lot of texturing and you want to create your own texture, you want to interface with other textures that maybe exist in the same shader. Um, so yeah. So this is not by any means a very extensive tutorial. I don't want it to make it very large. Uh, I just wanted to show a very simple port of this. And as I said, this is going to be linked to my repository, which contains all this information. And yeah, with that, with that I would like to thank you for watching and see you on the next tutorial. Bye-bye.